The Canon 60 was announced in November of 2012. It features a 20 megapixel full frame sensor. It has 11 focusing squares, one of which is cross type. It shoots at 4.5 frames per second in its burst mode, and it has some very nice features such as GPS and Wi Fi. It's also rated down to negative 3 EV on its central square for low light focusing. The 6D is essentially, not essentially, it is the entry level full frame camera for Canon and it has done very, very well. I've shot with it extensively, I've studied it and have a lot of friends that still use it. The Nikon D750 was announced in September of 2014. It features a 24 megapixel sensor, 51 focusing squares, 15 of which are cross type. It shoots at 6.5 frames per second. It is absolutely loaded with features, from the first of its kind tilting monitor, to the built-in intervalometer, to the built-in Wi-Fi. It shoots at 60 frames per second, 1080. There's a lot of wonderful features built into it. I love the image quality for stills. Now it's very important to note that at the time of this recording, there's a semi-recall going on with the D750. We don't know if they're going to rename it as something else or if they're gonna stick with that name. The matter has to do with a flaring issue because of the fo focusing array not fitting right into the camera body. The D750 that I have works fine and we've been doing tests with it ever since I've got it. No issues whatsoever. It's a great camera. Something that I'm trying to do with my Epic Shootouts is to provide to you the very best information that you can get about two competing cameras side by side. It's intended to be educational and informative and unbiased. I buy all this gear with my own money so there's really no reason for me to have preference one camera over the other. And if there's something that you feel I can do better or improve, definitely let me know in the comments and I will continue to try to get better at what I do. Now, if you own either of these cameras and you're struggling to learn them, the great news is I have some excellent crash course videos on both the Nikon D750 and the Canon 6D. I'll put a link in the description as well as at the end of the video. If you guys are interested in speed lights, Photoshop, advanced techniques, lighting courses, I have those as well. Definitely check them out. The three servo sports tests I wanted to perform were number one, a side to side moving subject with the sun behind the shooter. Number two, a fast moving forward subject with the sun to the shooter's back. Number three, a subject moving away from the shooter into heavy backlight. The plan was to shoot on the fastest burst speed that has continuous autofocus. I'll compose my subject on the far right or far left of the monitor, shoot on JPEG, count the out of focus shots, and determine an accuracy percentage based on the total number of shots taken. For side to side action on a moving target, the 6D scored 75%, in the D750, a 91%. For front moving action into good light, the 6D scored 44% in the D750, a 71%. For a subject moving away into heavy backlight, the 6D scored a 30% in the D750, a 72%. A camera's buffer performance is essentially how long it can shoot at its highest frames per second before it starts to fill up its memory, writing to the memory card, and at that point, the camera starts to slow down. What we're going to do now is a series of buffer performance tests. I'm going to shoot on both JPEG and RAW, and then RAW only because so many of you have asked for it. Okay, Bethany, you ready? Here we go. Ready, go. Nice. Let's listen to the Nikon D750 with both RAW and JPEG Find turned on. Ready? Go. So out of the gates, the Nikon D750 is obviously faster. You get many more frames per second initially. So here's the Canon 6D, just RAW. Ready, Bethany? Yeah. Set, go.
Nice. You can hear that it, the buffer is pretty good, but the frames per second is lower and therefore that makes sense. It's able to write to the memory card and has a little bit more capacity. Let's listen to the D750 just with RAW. All right, here we go. Ready? Go. Pretty close in terms of buffer performance time, but the D750 is writing many more frames per second initially, and it definitely, in my opinion, has the advantage here. Depending on the conditions you're shooting in, you can have some success with the 6D as a sports camera, but for focusing accuracy, I would personally choose the D750 between these two if I was shooting a sporting event. Another test I like to perform is a camera's ability to focus in low light. I like to use the camera's central focusing square and prefer to leave the focus assist lamp turned off. The methodology is outlined on my blog, but suffice it to say I have two high contrast targets at different distances and different brightnesses. Then I focus back and forth for 30 repetitions timing how long it takes for each camera to achieve 30 focus locks. If one camera consistently struggles to focus, it will take longer, and this is something we can easily see in the time differences. Both cameras are rated down to negative 3 EV, so this test should be interesting. The most consistent and reproducible results I tested was when the far target was at 6.5 EV and the near target was at negative 2 EV. On average, the Canon 6D scored 71.3 seconds, with the D750 scoring 71.6 seconds. This is as close to a tie as you can get. For whatever low light focusing edge the 6D used to have, it is equaled by the D750. When we turn the D750's auto focus lamp on, its score drops down to 42 seconds. Something to keep in mind if you do a lot of low light shooting this is a definite advantage for the D750. Side by side, when we look at the ISO JPEG charts, they are very comparable. Now in the past, I would say that the 6D was among the very best I have ever seen for ISO noise performance when it comes to stills. The D750 matches up extremely well, and even at very high ISOs, it's difficult to see any major difference in grain. Now this is where it gets interesting. Video ISO noise performance is a different matter. Watch what happens to the noise as we gradually increase it. The ISO performance in noise of the D750 becomes visible early on, and we see that the 6D is still a clear winner when it comes to video ISO noise. For JPEG stills, it's basically a tie. For video, I see a one-stop advantage for the 6D. Now many of you have been asking for a raw high ISO noise performance test, and in this case, we're going to take a quick look at astrophotography, which I typically like to shoot around 3200 and as high as 6400, which we are doing in this case. Now if you zoom in and take a close look side by side shooting in the same exact conditions with the same settings, it becomes very difficult to tell the difference in regards to noise performance at very high ISOs. So if you're considering either of these cameras for astrophotography, your lens and your technique are going to be far more important than the raw ISO performance you would see out of either of these cameras. I'm going to call this one a tie. Moray is a splotchy artifact that sometimes appears in vegetation, certain patterns and textures, as well as horizontally lined shirts, and I have an awesome shirt that picks it up great. In this case, I'm going to have to leave it up to you guys. Neither camera shows outstanding Moray performance. I tend to prefer the 6D a little bit more, only because I see some strange vertical artifacts occasionally in the D750. It's very subtle. Not everybody's going to see it. This is why I lean a little bit more towards the 6D. Rolling shutter is an artifact we see in vertical lines. It's a slushy, delayed, jello effect. 
The 6D shows rolling shutter, typical of most DSLRs, but I do see a very slight advantage for the D750 because it can record at 60 frames per second, and this seems to reduce it just a little bit. For my dynamic range test, I fire a strobe through a Stouffer wedge, which is essentially 41 little ND filters at one-third stop increments, or about 13.7 stops of total dynamic range. I overexpose the first part of the strip to calibrate and then analyze using camera raw. I'm basically looking for the last interval that has a distinct and complete border. The full methodology is outlined in detail on my blog. While this technique is not great for measuring total dynamic range, it can give us some really important insights when comparing two cameras with the same exact settings in the same lighting conditions. Take a look at these test results. At an ISO of 100, the Canon 6D seems to peak out between steps 34 and 35, and this is actually a very solid score. It's going to be more than enough for most shooting situations. The D750 shows very strong performance with a score around 38 and 39. It's about 1.3 stops better than the 6D. It's cleaner and there's less overall noise. Almost no banding, very impressive performance. This is going to be really great if you're a landscape photographer. For dynamic range, the win here goes to the Nikon D750. Grab a pen and a piece of paper for this next test and list it from 1 to 12. Pause the video if you need some extra time. I'm going to show you a dozen side-by-side -side portrait images and just write down whether you like the left image or the right image more. And at the end of this little quiz, I'll show you the answers and you can see which image quality you prefer out of which camera. This is your personal opinion, so there's no right or no wrong answers here. It's just which one you like more. Now, I intentionally mix up and not label these as to remove any bias you might have towards one brand or the other. And this is also what I refer to as the image quality test, which is essentially what type of images each camera produces. If you score in much more favor one over the other, you're probably going to be more happy with that camera. If the scores are even, then it's probably not going to matter as much. Some important notes about this test. I used auto white balance in the standard portrait style for each shot. Each set that you see was shot with the same exact exposure settings and I didn't Photoshop or adjust any of these images. This is straight out of the camera. We were a little bit pressed for time, but in the two hours we had, I tried to get as many different types of lighting shots possible from harsh sunlight, to backlight, to shade, to wide aperture, golden hour light, high ISO, post sunset, you name it. Even when I personally take this test, I tend to have a preference towards one of the cameras despite some minor strange things that might be going on with color sampling in white balance. Most of the time that can be corrected. So are you ready for the answers? Here they are. Score which camera you liked more, and that will give you a really good indication of which image quality you prefer for portraits. Both cameras come with a built-in HDR feature, which is great when you're pressed for time and you want to get that quick landscape type shot. I like the speed coming out of the D750. It's very fast, one or two seconds. The Canon 6D takes about six or seven seconds. I like the colors more in the Canon 6D, but a lot of this is going to come down to your personal preference when it comes to the HDR feature. I think they both do a very good job. Both cameras have a built-in Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi app that you can download from your respective app stores. In this case, I definitely have to give the win here to the Canon 6D simply because there are more features. You can change your exposure settings. There's a lot more you can do. The D750's app is a little bit limited and there's lots of room for growth. It's great to see Wi-Fi in both cameras, but the software side in terms of the app, on an iPhone at least, is better for the Canon. Something that I noticed was there seemed to be a pretty big difference between certain file sizes, particularly when we're talking about JPEGs. I kind of think this has to do with the megapixel difference, the improved color difference, in the dynamic range difference. And so when we're seeing these final 
sized images. They're going to be bigger in the D750. Not a problem for most shooters. If you do a lot of event shooting, it's something to be aware of. So what are some of the features that one camera has that the other does not? When we look at the 6D, it has built-in GPS. When we look at the D750, there are tons of extra features. The tilting monitor is welcome on a full-frame Nikon camera. It has a built-in intervalometer. It has built-in flash. It has two SD card slots. In my opinion, this adds about three or $400 of extra value to the D750. So which camera would I recommend to what kind of photographer? It's a great question, and I thought this Epic shootout was very interesting. We have a much older Canon camera known for its high ISO performance. The new Nikon goes toe to toe with it for stills. It also does just as well for low light focusing. No advantages for either camera there. The 6D stood out in its video ISO performance, which was much better. I thought this was fascinating. So if you are a videographer and you have a need for high ISO noise performance, the win here in the edge goes to the 6D. I think it's a great portrait camera. It's a great backup camera for wedding photographers. Very solid low light street photography camera. Great for receptions. The main thing with the 6D is it comes down to price. How much are you able to get it for? I had a friend who recently got one for $1,200. So she saved $1,000 and she put that savings towards a new lens. Very important if you do not have a 24 to 70 2.8 for either camera. That's what I recommend. If money is not a problem, the D750, I feel overall, is a better camera, especially for sports shooting, much better camera. If you are very critical about dynamic range, so if you do landscape photography, definitely better D750. The video features, I still have mixed feelings about. I think the Moray issue that I see is, is very comparable with the 6D. I like the look of the 6D a little bit more for video. Everything else, the D750, I believe, is a better camera. I think Nikon is going to fix this flaring issue and it won't be a problem anymore. We have yet to see if they're going to call it something else. But in the end, if you have the money, the D750 is a better all-round camera, no question in my mind. In any event, I want to say thank you guys so much for your support and watching. If you like the epic shootouts and you want to see more of them, please hit that subscribe button and share the video in any form where these kinds of discussions about these two cameras go on. I thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. If you found this video helpful, you may be interested in one of my many courses for Canon and Nikon DSLR cameras. I'll teach you the basics and show you how to shoot like a pro in no time. You can order them from the following link.